Have you ever spent tons of money on gear only to wonder a little later, how did I end up this way? Well, we're going to be talking about all that and more, but first, coffee. Now, today's topic is about spending money on gear, but more widely, how you end up on these rabbit holes anyway. Now, on the topic of spending money, as you can see, I'm surrounded here by various products, things I've bought before and new things that I've just got in. And whether it's arcade sticks or whether it's yo-yos or drawing equipment or coffee gear, I just absolutely get obsessed with all sorts of various hobbies. And I really want to talk to you about all the reasons why I think that keeps happening. But we're going to look at this coffee first. This is a pre-ground espresso that I got from a local coffee roaster. I don't think they're like super specialty or like especially <laughs> experts at doing this, but they're local and it's nice and fresh. So this is a super mandarin apparently. And the reason it's pre-ground, even though you can see I've got coffee gear here and this machine, which makes espresso, I don't actually have a grinder that can actually grind espresso like size. So eventually I did end up buying this espresso machine just because I was interested in going down that road and it's in a while I'm making coffee video. So do check out the at that previous episode. I'll put the link in the description. But I was never able to actually go further with espresso because this is kind of a beginner level machine and there are a number of limitations. It doesn't mean you can't make coffee at all, but there's a number of limitations that prevented me from going further into this rabbit hole, further into this hobby. And one of the main ones is that when you make filter coffee, sorry, when you make coffee with a machine like this, all you need is ground coffee that you get from a regular shop, just this fairly coarsely ground stuff that you can get anywhere. But if you want to go further into the hobby, and in this case, it's coffee, you have to end up with a little more specialized gear. And it's the same thing with fighting games. Often you buy the first pad controller you've got is actually the one that came with your console, but you realize it doesn't have this function or doesn't have that function or in a tournament setting, it would be better if the D-pad was a little more flexible like this. All sorts of these things pop up as you go further into the hobby. I've been drinking coffee for decades, honestly, but it's just, I've, I've never really, even though I use it on this series while I'm making coffee, I never really went much further than I learned how to make drip coffee and that's it. What I needed to go further with espresso especially was to get this, a grinder. So before I go ahead and unbox all of these things, let's just make ourselves a cup of coffee, shall we? So the way that I would make coffee is I would get this pre-ground coffee from a shop or go to a cafe where they can actually grind the coffee for me fresh because, you know, I'm still, again, not a hobbyist when it comes to espresso. I just want to drink some espresso. Then I'll get this, which is the basket, and I believe this is called a porta filter, and I would put it in this machine and we'd make some coffee. But one of the main differences is that, as you can see, this uses a different basket to what all the professionals use. When you go to like a cafe, they don't use a machine that looks like this. What I've got here is a basket with a teeny tiny hole in it. And then on top of it, you put this mesh, which has lots of holes. And so the coffee will go in here. It'll filter through this mesh thing, and then it'll all get squeezed into this one little hole here. And as far as my understanding goes, squeezing it down that little hole will give you what looks like traditional espresso with a bit of crema on the top and all that. When I bought the machine, it came with this little scoop. It's actually a two-in-one thing. It's got the scoop for the coffee, which I can use like this to just dish coffee into here. It's not super clean, and that's why I've got a tissue on the table, but I'll explain that as well, hopefully later, if I don't forget. And I'm going to try and put basically as much coffee in here as possible. In my experience, I put as much coffee in here, and it comes to about... 10 grams or 11 grams. If I were trying to do this properly, I'd put the weighing scale here, weigh the basket, and then I would stick the coffee in and find out exactly how much coffee I'd put in grams. Today, I'm not gonna be too pernickety about such things. I'm just going to squash it in with the second half of this tool. Scoop on this side, but I've got the flat circle here, which is apparently called a tamper. I'm going to squeeze the coffee into the thing but I'm not even 100% sure with this machine if this is even necessary because it doesn't work the same way as a normal espresso machine. With a normal espresso machine, once you've made this, which is your little espresso puck, the fact that you've squashed it in there nice and evenly is going to help the coffee come out better because the water is going to go in evenly, it's going to go through the coffee evenly, and then it's going to come out the bottom evenly. But 
like I said before, there's a teeny tiny hole on the bottom of here. So I'm actually not sure if maybe you need to do any of this because the water goes in, it's just going to get filled up with water and then it's going to get squeezed out the bottom anyway. Well, we shall see. Squeeze this basket in here. Hopefully the coffee won't go flying everywhere. Before we actually make this coffee, I want to show you what I'm hoping to replace it with today. And that's the first thing we're going to unbox. It's this. It's a new portafilter and basket. And the reason I'm showing you this and all of these other things is not just because I'm really into coffee, it's because I'm into hobbies. Not just any hobbies, like I just wanna have some fun here and there. I love hobbies that seem simple on the surface, but go surprisingly deep when you look beneath. And speaking of deep, this should be a little bit deeper than this version here because it's a completely different design, which I'll explain to you in a moment. It is a bottomless portafilter. There's a couple holes on the bottom of here, but I don't even really know. I think it's just to split the coffee into two different cups if you're making a double. On this one, you'll see it looks completely different on the base. There it is. It is a bottomless portafilter. It's a basket on the inside and on the base you can just see the other holes of the basket. Now the reason I've had to buy this is it doesn't come with the machine and the reason it doesn't come with the machine is because if you don't use a basket like this then you have a much more difficult time of making a tasty drink. This is actually a better basket to come or better portafilter design to come with a beginner machine because most beginners are not grinding their own coffee and they don't really understand how to make the fine adjustments. Like me, I'm one of those people still, I don't know how to make such fine adjustments. I don't know if this will completely transform this machine, but I just wanted to experiment and experience what it's like. I'm gonna warm this cup up by putting a bit of hot water in it first. Are you supposed to do that? No idea. But that's the beauty of getting into the hobby, discovering how things are meant to be done, discovering how you can do things your own way, can bend the rules a little bit and become a little bit original and make it your own thing. There are so many things I want to talk to you about when it comes to not just coffee, but hobbies in general. I'm gonna put the filter in. Let's make some coffee. All right, have a good look at that coffee. Not 100% if this is technically an espresso, but I used the kind of espresso machine with the espresso puck thing, and hopefully it will taste like an espresso. <coughs> it's okay. It's all right. It tastes a lot like the coffee that you get from like a family restaurant when you press the button on the machine to get an Americano or an espresso or just a general normal coffee. This is pretty much what it tastes like. It means I've got like a sort of restaurant experience, not a nice restaurant, like a cheap restaurant experience at home. That's convenient. And for most people, I think that's all they really want. But the reason I find this really interesting is because I don't just want coffee. In fact, there's actually few times where I think to myself, I need a coffee. It's like, oh, if I did, if I had a coffee now, I would feel better. It's more like I really love making coffee and so I keep doing it. I love the whole process. It's like, I, wa I wanna take a break from work. So I'm gonna go to the kitchen, I'm gonna boil the kettle and I'm gonna spend 15 minutes doing all the prep, doing it because not that I, it's not actually that I need caffeine. If I'm really honest with you, and I think caffeine affects people all differently, but caffeine actually just kind of makes me sleepy. In fact, most of last year when you didn't see a lot of while I'm making coffee videos, it's because I was experimenting. I was actually experimenting with decaf and I didn't think it was very interesting to make because I was drinking like decaffeinated instant coffee. I was like, okay, this is fine, but it's not really, I think after about a year of doing it, I was like, it's not really making any difference to my sleeping patterns or my quality of sleep. So gone back to caffeinated coffee and I'm just experimenting. And so if it's not that I really need coffee or especially want coffee all the time, why is it that I keep making coffee? And why do I get into any hobby, especially with things like video games or drawing? It's like, I don't actually need to play games. Actually, a lot of the time I look at my Steam library and I go, I don't even really want to play any of these games. I feel like I've come to a balance in my life where I'm like, it's not that I have to play these games. It's not that I'm trying to run away from anything like annoying in my life. It's not like I hate my job so much that I like need to play video games to get rid of the stress or anything. It's like, 
if I want to play a game, it's usually just because I want to play that game. Like that game looks really interesting and so I want to play it. But I think when you're growing up as a kid, for a lot of people, video games are an escape. Not everyone, of course, but for me, it was like, okay, finally, it's the weekend. Video games are a thing that I wasn't allowed to do on the weekdays. I think for the modern generations, that might sound insane. It's just like, what? You spent five days of the week not playing video games? It's true. <laughs> and look where I've ended up now. I've turned video gaming into my whole life. They are an exciting way for me to get further in to a rabbit hole of a sort. So by playing video games, I get into the controller rabbit hole, the fighting game rabbit hole, the fighting game community rabbit hole. Just by holding my own controller, by understanding how it works, I feel like I've gained entry into a community. And I think there's a very deep discussion about community and how you become part of it. But definitely holding a controller makes you feel like it's your ticket of entries. Like this is the reason why I'm allowed to be here. Of course, if you show up to a fighting game event without a controller, you're 100%. To be honest, you're probably even more welcome than the regular people there. But what I'm saying is that when you have the uniform, it makes you feel like you deserve to be there. When it comes to coffee, drinking coffee is kind of the first prerequisite, right? You just have to enjoy being in a cafe. After that, you have, if you enjoy buying coffee, tasting coffee, enjoying the drink itself, then you go on to buying yourself a machine and having it at home. Or you go on to making a habit of always going to the same cafe every single day. Or you end up making friends who are really into coffee. Or you go make a habit of going with those friends to a coffee shop. The same thing happens with drawing. You start off just like, well, I like pictures. But you start thinking like, there are pictures that don't exist. I'd like to make them. And, you know, <laughs> back in the day, AI didn't exist. And even though AI exists, it exists now, there's a lot of questions as to, like, should you use it? Like, is it actually the right path to make you happy? Is, is making an image through AI going to give you the satisfaction that you're looking for. For me, there was just stuff that I wanted to draw. I just really enjoyed the process of doing it. And there was also stuff I wanted to see that didn't exist. I wanted to, I had my own comic ideas that I wanted to create. And so I got further into the drawing hobby. When it comes to yo-yos, when I first started as a kid, it was that other people were really into yo-yo and I just wanted to be part of that. I wanted to have one as well. But then I started practicing at home and I just genuinely wanted to learn the tricks. Even if no one ever saw me do it, I wanted the ability to do it. And then it goes on to buying more expensive yo-yos that can do even more complicated tricks. And then you can have more than one yo-yo at the same time, or you can have yo-yos of different varieties and yo-yos that actually aren't even connected, the strings not even tied to the axle of the yo-yo. It's insane. And I love these rabbit holes. The one you see right here is coffee, but it's just, it's just one of many rabbit holes. And it's also part of a discussion I'd like to have about the content on this channel. Of course, it started with me unboxing like video game stuff, but because I'm in Japan, ended up showing people stuff that I, places that I went to in Japan, and then eventually started moving on to things I was just doing while I was in Japan, especially drawing because I'm really interested in manga, which is, you know, born in Japan. Comics, obviously a worldwide thing, but manga, the specific ways and thought processes that go into making a comic in Japan are, in general, fairly, fairly different to what it was like traditionally for comics in the West. When it comes down to it, what I'm trying to say is not just interested in the drink because it's tasty or because it's caffeinated. To me, this is a fun hobby. And as such, I like to go all the way down the rabbit hole just to see how far it goes. And it just the reason I'm so interested is because I can't believe to myself when I first see the rabbit hole, it's, okay, it's just a hole in the ground. That's where the rabbit lives. You go further and it turns out to be the whole Alice in Wonderland deal. It's like, whoa, there is so much more going on here. I could have lived my entire life without knowing what was inside this rabbit hole. But now that I've seen it, I want to know what's inside. I don't want to live my life having not explored it any further. I think there are problems that arise from this with regards to time management. Unfortunately, we have a limited amount of time. And if I actually did every single hobby on earth, wouldn't have enough time to really master any of them. And I think there's an argument to be had that maybe I haven't really mastered any of the hobbies that I've got. But is that even the goal? 
was mastery the goal? We've got another video talking about that in my video. I'll put a link somewhere about why your controller matters when you play games. I started by looking up how to make better espresso. And I saw that if you buy a more expensive machine, you could make better espresso. But then I discovered it doesn't come down to really the price of the machine. It comes down to the making of the espresso itself. How do you prepare the coffee so that it's evenly distributed in this basket? Turns out even a machine like this, it handles many of the basic essentials just fine. You know, it pumps water with pressure through this porter filter. The th problem is with the standard porter filter, you can't really explore all the nuances and depth and the fun of all the details that go into making a coffee with this filter because it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. This is like one of the main steps towards preparing better coffee. It's using this basket, which looks like this, which has holes at the bottom. After this, you could put a little spout that splits the coffee into two sides for a double shot into two separate cups if you wanted to. But I think the main important thing about a basket like this is that you have to prepare the coffee correctly so that not only is it evenly distributed, but it's flat on top. And also if you get like a puck screen, you can help use that to also more evenly distribute the water. It goes quite deep. I don't know if it goes as deep as something as like aeronautical engineering. I think there are certain things that I could get invested in as a hobby, but I don't because I'm like, okay, well, it's complicated, but I'm not interested in things just because they're complex, especially when it comes to coffee. It's like this very normal everyday thing that we just enjoy as part of our lives. And isn't it cool that something so everyday and simple on the surface could actually be so deep and could entirely become your career and your main thing. You could go to competitions making this stuff. I don't plan to go to any competitions at the moment, but I find it fascinating. In fact, the reason that I'm so interested is probably because it seems so simple on the surface. I'm interested in things that are also complex on the surface, but simple things that speak to you on a very basic level, especially my main training area. The thing I studied at university for six years was compose, com composing composition of music. I really wanted to be a composer. That has the ability to be very complex on the surface as well as very simple. It could be something as simple as twinkle, twinkle, little star. But if you looked beneath the surface, you'd be like, okay, there's melody here, there's line, there's harmony, there's implied harmony, there's rhythm, timbre, tone, there's everything. You can turn the simplest thing into a complicated thing. I think the same thing happens with coffee. You could take something simple like, let's make a very fast coffee. We're gonna squeeze hot water at pressure through coffee beans just so that we can make a coffee as quickly as possible. That crazy concept turning into the espresso, which turned into the cappuccino, which turns into the latte, which turns into all of these crazy drinks that you can now make with an espresso or with, the, with just coffee in general. I find that absolutely fascinating that it started off so simple. You know, we just want coffee fast. It's turned it to, we want coffee and we want it to be a, a work of art. And I am aware that I have started to speak more quickly. I will try to slow down. The reason I keep referring to it as a rabbit hole is that when you open the first door, if you take the red pill or the blue pill and you decide to shrink and go large and go into the matrix or whatever it is you plan to do, it always opens up like 10 more doors. So by looking at a filter like this, you can't just put regular coffee like this into it. This is the coffee that I showed you earlier. Bought this from a cafe roaster. So I've already gone a little bit further than the normal customer into a hobby land. If I put it into this filter, probably won't do a fantastic job because it is quite coarsely ground and clumpy and there is more to it to make it great coffee. And apparently one of the steps that you need to go to next is to get yourself a nice grinder. In fact, from the research I did online, it seems like it's not even really the machine which is the most important thing you need to buy. It turns out that your grinder is going to have a much more significant impact on the quality of your coffee. And so I've gone and looked up this. It's called the Easy Presso and it's the X Pro S. The reason I've chosen this grinder is because it's cheaper than an electric grinder. If you buy a really nice expensive electric grinder, they can go between 600 and maybe two to maybe $20,000. This was nowhere near it. This was something like 
$200. Sorry, at the current exchange rate, it's more like $150. And this is the machine itself. What I've heard is that you can make fantastically nice espresso with this grinder. And the reason it's cheaper than the other grinders is that you have to do it by hand, which I actually think is better for me. Inside the package, we've got all the things that we can use to turn this into a proper grinder. I believe it's gonna go on like this and we can actually do it. Let's grind. You push on the handle and then you rotate it around until it's like this. This way, when you're standing it up on your countertop, it's not jutting out and I guess the grinder is also less likely to topple over. That's really cool. Even stuff like this, being able to spin this really smoothly, <laughs> even though this is not how you would grind the coffee itself, that is just a mechanical piece of art. I have a huge appreciation for people who design things to be smoothly operated, even if that's not the intended way for them to be used in practice. One of the most famous ballpoint pens, isn't it? Like the design actually came from the fact that people knew, the designer knew that people were going to be fiddling with it. And so they made a pen that was fun to click and fiddle around with. But the rabbit hole goes even deeper. You can't just buy this and then get a nice grinder. In order to actually distribute those grinds nice and evenly, you then need a tool like this. There's some discussion out there whether this is actually the perfect way to do it, but it's a distribution tool. What it is is basically a bunch of spikes that will allow you to spread the coffee out. So you'll put your coffee grinds in here and then stir it around with these acupuncture <laughs> needles or whatever they are. And supposedly, if these are made correctly, they won't make the coffee worse. Hopefully it will actually distribute the coffee and get rid of those clumps, but it goes even further. You remember I showed you this. It's the plastic tamper that comes with my cheap espresso machine and it's done the job for the past couple of years and it's been absolutely fine. But as you can see, Getting an even distribution with this plastic tool is going to be, not only is it a little bit difficult, you can see it actually bends because over time pushing on it, it's actually, because it's plastic, it's actually misshapen now, so it's not completely flat. And that's what this tool is for. This is a tamper. I'm not even going to say the name of it because I'm worried it will get flagged on YouTube. So I'm just gonna show you the logo so you understand what it is. If I get it out the box, it's actually a fairly nice one. I didn't actually want to buy a nice tamper. I wanted to buy something nice and simple, but it turned out it was gonna be like an extra $15 on top of the basic ones. So I was like, okay, I'll just get a slightly nicer one. Why not? This is a 51 millimeter tamper. And as you can see, it's got radial concentric circles on the top, which will make the coffee look kind of cool. Again, don't know if this actually makes the coffee better, but I thought, hey, why not have a bit of fun with it? When the coffee has been stirred around with this tool, you put this on top and it will actually make a nice level temp for you just by pressing like this. That was a weird sound. And the reason it's self-leveling is because it has this lip around the edge, which just rests on top like so. It's got a nice wooden top. Put this on top of your puck like so, and just press it like this. And it should be very difficult to mess this up because it's self-leveling. That's incredibly satisfying, by the way. Obviously, if I have the chance of getting a piece of gear that will make the experience more fun, like with a mechanism like that, why I am 100% jumping on board. And believe it or not, <laughs> the rabbit hole goes even further. This is a puck screen. So apparently when the water comes out of the boiler and onto my flat bed of coffee, which I've done my best to prepare and make as compact as possible, but evenly distributed as possible. The theory is that the water will go through this puck screen and it will be evenly distributed under it through these little holes. To be honest, even just looking at it is quite satisfying. I just love the way that it reflects the light like that. You just put this on top like so, and then it will sit on top of the coffee. The very final thing that I wanted, and this is mostly just because I'm making this coffee while doing, while talking to you on this series while I'm making coffee. So I thought it would be more fun if we actually have a coffee cup where you can see the coffee. At the moment, I've got this opaque white cup, which I love. It makes my coffee taste fantastic. I thought I'd get myself some clear cups. But I think these are one of the most popular cups that you can buy online that are not super expensive. Now, from what I've seen online, it doesn't make a huge difference whether you use a double walled cup when it comes to keeping the coffee warm. But I do think it looks fantastically cool because if it's double walled, it looks like the coffee is kind of suspended mid air. I mean, at the same time, if it weren't double walled, you would still see the coffee, but I feel like it helps it look a little more clear. So there you have it. That is basically the entire toolkit 
And again, I don't think this is actually going to help me make the most professional coffee. I actually have an even more exciting purchase coming, which I will unveil in the future, but it's a new espresso machine. So I will be moving on to that. And I think actually I won't need a lot of this stuff. I will need this and I will need this, but things like this temper, this is actually designed specifically for this 51 millimeter porta filter, which I won't be using in the new machine. So there's a few items here that I won't be using, but the point is for me, it is more than caffeine. It's more than just a tasty drink. It's more than even that I use it here on the channel. It's just that I can't help but get really excited about hobbies that are rabbit holes, things that seem very simple and that you think you know everything about just from the outside, but then you go in and they turn out to be these Alice in Wonderland mazes filled with all sorts of crazy things and other roots and other rabbit holes. They're like rabbit holes within rabbit holes. For me, that's how I feel about fighting games. That's how I feel about coffee. It's how I feel about yo-yoing. It's feel how I feel about drawing. It's how I feel about music. There are a lot of things that I'm interested in. And again, it's a separate discussion as to whether all those things need to be here on this channel. But today's discussion was actually less about coffee and more about just hobbies and following the rabbit and just seeing how deep the hole goes. And if you go deep enough, that hole will extend to your wallet as well. So the pun works all around. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've been Nihongo Gamer. Make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more content like this. Like the video, that always helps. And leave a comment below. What is your rabbit hole hobby? I would really like to know because as you've seen on my channel, you've pretty much seen all my hobbies. I might have a few more that I can still introduce, but you've seen that I've got a large number of hobbies. What is your hobby that you thought was just kind of simple on the surface, but when you discovered how complex it could really get, that's when you got really excited and jumped into it and bought all the gear and learned all the technique and watched all the tutorials. Tell me what your rabbit hole is in the comments below. That's all for today. I hope I'll see you real, real soon.